So about a half hour ago, the official Linus Tech Tips Twitter, or X account, was unfortunately hacked again. And before we dive into this, hi, I'm John, I just walked back in the door, got home from DEF CON, and I got to see Luke, at least I saw him during the crash and compile event, didn't get a chance to say hi, but this is some info, some new uh, chatter and conversation to have as we get back. And look, uh, unfortunately, I don't mean to hey, put out this video to say, oh, dogpiling or trying to point and shame, this is just to raise awareness and get more of the information and messaging out. Now, Linus, from his personal Twitter account, did tweet, hey, beware, the main Linus Tech Tips Twitter account has been hijacked. Four minutes after I received this email, I tried to log in, but the password had already been changed. By the time I could update the password, the two-factor authentication has been deactivated or reactivated. He states he has contacted Twitter support, and he includes the email or a screenshot of it, noting that the location here, that it's registering a new account access, is from Russia. A little device here, Android 68.42.74, whatever. We don't need to drill down into that, but I think some of the commentary is still a little bit interesting. Following this just a little bit after, and I've been trying to keep tabs on this, the first scam post is up and available. Unfortunately, it was removed at the time of recording, but I do have a screenshot as this is all kind of unfolding. They note, hey, do not interact with this. It is a scam. It is not legitimate. And we wanted to get the word out from Linus himself that, hey, this isn't something that we want anyone to fall for. And also, it is absolutely worth mentioning, one of the threat actor or hackers and adversaries' tricks is to not allow anyone else to comment on that post or even quote tweet it to express and exclaim, hey, this is a scam, this is illegitimate. So the best we can do is try to make others aware with whatever other out of bound comms. I love the commentary here. If anyone from Twitter is curious about how to prevent this going forward, how about when you get an email saying, hey, if this wasn't you, then give them the option to lock down the account instead of prompting them to log in. You can't really recover it if it's already compromised and all the ways back in, like two-factor authentication or some of the backup codes are unable to be accessed. I did try to chime in on this, just, hey, super sorry, man. I know that sucks, but if I can help with anything, please say the word. I wanted to extend a helping hand at the very least, what we can do. I am doing my best to capture this as it is unfolding, and we can see Linus chatting a little bit more, talking about, hey, there are new posts up. We'd love to see if we could get community notes on this to try to add the disclaimer, like, this is fake, this is illegitimate, it is a scam, do not interact with it, but oftentimes they have been taken down. I'll try my best to include the screenshots to see it, but one of the most interesting conversations now is Linus saying, look, here's how the scam works. They're posting and deleting to avoid any community notes, and when you DM them, they'll try to get you to send money to an address in Russia. Haven't heard anything from Twitter, or X support yet, looks like someone is already trying to chat with the individual, that threat actor, that adversary, that ill-intended person, hey, actually trying to scam, selling these laptops. Do you have a Zelle or Apple Pay? I have Zelle. Okay, what's the shipping number? Follow me, blah, blah, blah. You can see this all on Twitter, so I don't mean to drag you down through it all, but I think it is still something that we should showcase so you know how this all happens. Interesting that they are going to be blocked after they're relaying the info to Linus. Hey, sorry, super quick, John from the future here. Just wanted to throw this in. While I was editing, I did see some updates from Linus. Account appears to be locked down now with an update from Luke. Uh, not really happy with the process, but grateful to everyone at Twitter tracking this. Uh, looks like things are okay for the moment, and I guess we'll see what happens then as this is resolved further. And I'd like to talk about how this actually happens. How does a hacker, threat actor, adversary gain access to and compromise any online account, not just Twitter or x.com and Linus Tech Tips or anyone else, how you might be compromised from this. More often than not, it's from InfoStealer malware. And we've talked about InfoStealer malware all the time on this channel. We've showcased it in a couple other videos. So if you'd like to check out others, even like the moment InfoStealer malware runs and how it takes a picture of your desktop and collects all the passwords, cookies, session tokens, things that gain access to an account without needing two-factor authentication or multi-factor authentication. So I have here an export of some info stealer logs, what's actually pulled, extracted, retrieved, and sent to the hacker as this runs on someone's computer. Now, take a look at the files here. Here's a brute force.txt, some other file names, cookie list, domains that it's looking for, maybe some passwords in the mix, Steam tokens, and I'll open these up. Thankfully, the Steam tokens is empty. Uh, this victim, and let me be clear, this is not Linus Tech Tips and his computer or anyone else's. Well, it's someone else's. This is real. But thankfully, they did not have any Steam tokens extracted. Obviously, that's a huge one. The system info will tell you just about everything that's pulled from that computer itself. And this is from Water Clouds Info Stealer. Um, I don't exactly know. I'm no, more often seeing like a Redline, Vidar, Jupiter Stealer. And there's a lot of info here, obviously. Hey, the installed applications, information on the users, the programs that they might have installed. And <laughs> okay, that's a funny one. And of course, all the information 
information they can track down. Running processes, applications that are installed and accessible. You see a lot of service hosts here, just normal for Windows. And it's usually Windows that is affected by this. It's usually Microsoft Windows in the operating system, most times susceptible to InfoStealer malware. Oh, interesting. They're using SteelC default.exe. SteelC is another info stealer. I'm wondering if Water Clouds is just kind of like claiming it as theirs, rebranding it. That's kind of odd. But let's take a look at some of the passwords in here because this is, again, just tracking down. And I'm going to have to blur a lot of this because this is totally real. But if I control F for Twitter, they do have a twitter.com and their sign up, including their clear text username and password. Here's mobiletwitter.com. Let me search for a little bit more, mobiletwitter.com. Again, same clear text password and username, again. But you can see Nintendo accounts, you can see accounts.google. Unfortunately, it looks like this person in their email is really using the same password for just about everything. So uh, lessons learned there. But the credentials or the passwords themselves are not always what you need. That is going to end up being really the cookies, the session tokens and access to the browser as you've already logged in. Because if you can get that session, then, well, you don't need the two-factor authentication. You just have their access and you can impersonate and gain access to the account right away. So let me open up the cookie list here and we can show you some of these. And I'll zoom out again for water clouds and their silly banner. But these are all the domains that they would have pulled some session cookies from. They just have a big long listing here. Looks like Facebook's in there. Instagram, Netflix, Pinterest, Stack Overflow and YouTube, Google, of course. Info stealers will take everything that's saved on your computer. But if we drill down into the folders here, that's where you get a lot more juicy details, like some of the autofill information that's stored in other web browsers like Google Chrome, Microsoft Edge, etc. You can even see Microsoft Edge payments here. Oh, we're gonna have to blur just about all of that. <laughs> that's the spooky stuff because it will include your address. That'll include, hey, the information that you use to pay for something and, you know, where that credit card info comes from like your billing address in most cases. Date of birth, oh goodness, email. Okay, we're out of this one, we're done with that. Anyway, I'm sorry, I don't mean to be going all over the place, but the cookies here are where this really gets tough. Because remember, I did mention you could just, hey, control F for twitter.com, and this will include all of the session values like the guest ID, whether it's marketing ads, personalization, etc. but those aren't the juicy ones for us. If I look for twitter.com again, might not be in Google Chrome. I think we'll go take a look at Microsoft Edge. Now, if I look for twitter.com, you can see the auth token here, and that is everything that you would need to actually gain control of that account. You just swap the cookies in your web browser and you've now gained access. No two-factor authentication needed. Now, I don't mean to beat you over the head with this and fall down the rabbit hole with all the data that's included in InfoStealer malware and their logs and all the things that they capture. But I do want to use that as a moment to emphasize and reiterate, look, that's why people tell you don't let your browser save your password as you log in. Or don't click that remember me checkbox and have it store all those cookies because those are stored locally. Your web browser is going to keep track of them and then when malware runs on the computer, it can extract, carve that out, and send it to the hackers. You should use a password manager, something that will randomly generate a long, complex, and strong secure password, different for every single service or online account that you use, and you should use multi-factor authentication. And look, I know folks might say, well, what the heck? Is multi-factor authentication just useless if those cookies or those session tokens can just open the door and let you in? Well, no, it's one safeguard and one mitigation that we can keep using to better the security posture, but let's talk about that a little bit more. And while we're doing that, let's take another look at Linus's Twitter and see if he's chatting about this anymore. Okay, looks like he does have a new post seven minutes ago. Brilliant response to my hijacking report, Twitter. Oh, hey, thanks for reaching out. We've investigated your report. Looks like you still have control of your... What? <laughs> If you notice there's suspicious activity, change your password, check your connections, enable 2FA, verify your email. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, man. Anyway, let's dive into how you might be able to better protect your own online accounts, Twitter and X.com specifically in this case, but these are things you should be looking for for any online account or website that you use. Let me hop over to the settings here, and hopefully this might be some good insight for Linus just as well. Uh, look, let's go take a look at that security and account access section here. Now let's go top to bottom here, but let's try to cover everything that we can. Obviously the security section is where we would dive into the two-factor authentication. For two-factor authentication, text messaging or SMS verification is not the best. It's not ideal. You know folks talk about SIM jacking and there's a whole lot of info and research out and about on that. The general gist is try to avoid it. You should use an authenticator app like Google Authenticator. I think Microsoft has their own Microsoft Authenticator. Duo is what a lot of folks use. That's what I tend to use personally for my own device. But but even more than that is actually using a security key. And look, that's a good reminder. I should probably go ahead and set one up. And there's Bitwarden kicking in at one of the password managers that I like to use.
use. Make sure you do use a digital password manager, but ultimately have a security key, a physical hardware token. And I like to use Yubico and YubiKey. And this is really how you get all pedestals of authentication. They talk about the three layers, the levels that make up authentication. First of all, you need something that you know. Now that's usually your password, right? You need something that you have, and that's meant to be your two-factor authentication via your phone, authenticator app, and more importantly, something that you are. That's biometrics. That's your fingerprint, like you try to unlock your phone, or an eye scan, or a facial recognition. When you use a Yubico key, and this is not sponsored or any crap like that, it's just literally, hey, you've got this dot where you can leave your fingerprint, and it will scan, and now you have all of those layers. Your password, you have something that you have, and something that you are, your fingerprint there. Let's make sure, and I gotta set up the security key. Let me do that after I'm done recording. Backup codes are the next tidbit here, because what Linus had expressed in his tweet is that they deactivated two-factor authentication, so they would have unchecked these and then toggled them back on to set them up again with their own rendition of their mobile app authenticator or security key. The backup codes here, you want to end up having a new code and make sure you do have that written down. I'm going to blur and redact this, obviously, but they would have just generated a new one, and you can do this over and over and over again. But if that's changed, that won't be a way that Linus could get back into his account. So try to make sure, hey, you've added enough walls, fences, things to lock this up, and that's not going to be an issue for you. Let me keep cruising, though, because there is more we could dig into. Obviously, ID verification is its own thing. I believe that takes a little bit more effort to, hey, just validate that you are who you are. Uh, but if we actually take a look at the additional password protection, that is where we'll say, hey, you'll end up needing to confirm and via an email, via more communication to you when someone tries to reset your password. That would be an extra wall. And I know people talk about the Swiss cheese mo mentality in the model here where you're just adding layers and layers of defense. While some might have holes, you keep putting more pieces of Swiss cheese behind it, those holes will get smaller and those gaps will start to close. So that's the best that you can do to amp up security. Let's get into apps and sessions. This is where you would be able to see any other applications or software that do have control of your account. Now, I use a lot of these social media stuff between Restream, between Zapier, between Bob or typefully or HubSpot is just as well. But if you can limit this, if you can turn a lot of those off, if you know you don't use them anymore, look, you're limiting the attack surface in case any of those other providers or third-party stuff gets compromised themselves. I know that's spooky wooky. I don't mean to be fear, uncertainty, and doubt there. I don't mean to be doom and gloom, but you are limiting the attack surface when you can close those down. Account access history. Uh, we need to log in with our password here. Let me do that super quick. And this is handy because then you can see all of the account access from what device, like an Android phone, an iPhone, or Google web browser on the desktop, and the IP address that it's coming from. Obviously, it's worth reviewing this when you can or if it's worthwhile to make sure, okay, you no access from places that you never wanted them to be there in the first place. Then we can talk a little bit about the logged in devices and apps. And again, this is everything that it's used to seeing your connectivity from. Like, hey, you normally use your phone or your desktop application in, I don't know, like, like Texas in the United States, but not Russia. And that's why Twitter or the online service, whatever account will know, okay, this is not normal if you're coming from a different location or using a different device. If a session token, again, multi-factor authentication being bypassed, just using the cookies to get into an account, if it sees a new location, it's saying, hey, there's some access from someplace weird. That's why it sends that email. That's what Linus received. But again, it would be really cool if we could just lock down the account and say, no, 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 that's not me. Please don't let that happen. <laughs> You can see connected accounts, of course, where there's a little bit more access, you can limit that, and delegation. Now, when you have shared accounts, which is probably very common for content creators, especially someone of the size of Linus Tech Tips, that, look, you're gonna have editors, you're gonna have social media managers, you're gonna have other folks that use it. And that's to say, maybe Linus was not the one that was compromised with InfoStealer Malware. And again, I'm, I'm just speculating that that was the issue here. But any member of his team could very well have been affected. I know the last time this was a problem, you saw phishing emails like it and red lines sealer or other samples, that is what could affect anyone that might have access to this account. That's juicy details, but you do want to try to limit that attack surface. Okay, with that, I'm done yapping. Sorry, thank you for letting me ramble. And look, I'm sorry, Linus, I know this sucks. I know it's a crappy situation, uh, but look, it's uh, something that happens to all of us, to the best of us. I'm sure I'm going to be compromised sooner than I know. <laughs>
Big thanks to the folks that are trying to amplify the message. This is ongoing, this is breaking, this is new information, and we just want to get the word out. I see Luke chiming in, and I'm grateful for folks looping me in the best that they can. It's not a lot that I can do, but look, I do want to help, and like, yes, the antivirus is an absolute necessary layer for InfoStealer malware, if that's the case. Again, speculation on that, what could have been would have happened. Two-factor authentication where you can use it and absolutely use a hardware token. Without a doubt, try to make sure that's like the only option for logging in because if that phone were to be compromised, if whatever the case may be, look, just this, the single key is how you can gain control of that account. Another quick shout out, special thank you to Amy for keeping me in the loop. She had messaged me, he's like, hey, it looks like this is ongoing. And I'm like, yep, thank you, I already got it. Trying to do the best that I can to help spread the word if at the very least that's the least I can do. But I do wanna get that messaging out. Do everything that you can to layer up those defenses and make sure this doesn't happen to you and especially don't happen again in the future. Looking at the Linus Tech Tips account, the one that is compromised and hijacked right now, I don't see any of the scam or fake or illegitimate messaging out and about. Uh, I know they were posts previously, but those are seemingly taken down. And as Linus mentioned, they keep going up and down so they don't get those community notes slapped on them. Thanks so much for watching. Hope that gave a little bit more insight. Hope that made you a little bit more aware, knowing what threats are out there and how you might be able to try to better protect yourself. It's not a silver bullet. There's no such thing, but we can layer those defenses and hope to look, hey, we're trying to put all the puzzle pieces in place so this doesn't happen in the future. I know there's a lot of folks chiming in saying, hey, maybe this happened because uh, Luke was at DEF CON. Absolutely not. I want to shoot that down as fast as I can. That's totally not uh, a realistic option. Or, I mean, sure, maybe speculation and conspiracy theory and in one direction, but I don't think that that is uh, the conclusion you should draw here. My heart goes out to you, Linus. I'm sorry. I know this is a crappy situation, but I think you're doing the right thing. Hey, just trying to get the messaging out. We don't want anyone else to get scammed. And with that, look, at the very least, now we can have a little bit more awareness and education. So hopefully no one else has an issue like this and we can layer up those defenses with a little bit more intel, education, and awareness.